Hi there, in this video we are taking a look at the autofocus performance of the legendary 18-35 from Sigma, adapted to the Sony FX30 using the Sigma MC11 adapter. Is the autofocus going to be reliable enough for you to get the adapter and keep this wonderful lens, or should you sell it, cry a bit and move on? And as a quick side note, I just want to say that people shooting with the new Alpha 6700 from Sony should probably expect similar, if not the same, autofocus performance using this combo. Let's dive into some of the tests. And for this first test, I did the classic moving around back and forward in front of the camera. The first shot here was done at 2.8, and I think the autofocus feels sticky and confident. I can't say that I noticed any hunting or any hesitation here. And by the way, the f2.8 was my mistake. I have a take here coming up at 1.8. Sadly, I didn't have the screen recording going for that one. So yeah, but comparing the footage between the 2.8 and the 1.8, I couldn't tell any difference whatsoever. I think it's safe to say that we're getting the same performance here on a shot like this. Yeah, sorry about messing up the screen recording of the 1.8, but the rest of the samples in this video are all shot at f1.8. So for this next shot, I want to set up something to mimic like a documentary shoot or if you're out filming yourself, hiking. So I tried to set it up to have some trees and lines just to see if I could trick the autofocus to grab onto something else. But yeah, same as before, the autofocus feels very reliable, even in this case. This test here coming up is one that I thought where I might be able to trick the autofocus just a tiny bit. We have the sheep grazing in the background here all well lit and everything while I'm stepping into frame here in this more shadowy area. Same thing here, the autofocus nailed it every time, stuck with me. During all the tests that I did with the autofocus on this day, this here was the only time where the autofocus actually struggled to lock onto things. So in this first attempt, I tried to get this plant or weed or whatever you want to call it in the foreground to be in focus and move around the focus point between different objects but i could never get reliable results on this little weed plant thingamajig here until i kind of scooch back a bit, leaned away from the plant, maybe like half a foot or so, then the autofocus was able to grab onto the plant and everything else. So I'm not quite sure what happened on this test here, but I will show you another test here in just a minute where we're gonna push the minimum autofocus distance on this lens. The MC11 adapter have a couple of nice features that I'm going to show you here real quick before we move along to the final test of this video. When you attach a compatible lens to the MC11 adapter, there's a little LED down here that will blink green to confirm that this lens is compatible with the adapter. There's also an orange LED. If that happens, that means the lens is compatible, but you need to upgrade the firmware on the adapter. And speaking of lens data and firmware, all of this is done with the Sigma optimization tool that is available for both Windows and Mac. Now, lastly, I wanted to show you a quick indoor autofocus test here in the studio where I'm going to push the minimum focus and distance just to see if we can reproduce the issue we had with the previous test. I'm also gonna switch between the studio mic and the built-in microphones on my Sony FX30. If there's any of you out there who's new to this lens and you're interested in how much the autofocus motors will be picked up by the camera. Okay, so this is gonna be a quick test here in the studio just to see how this, uh, this lens and lens adapter works for a talking head in somewhat of a dimly lit location like this. So I'm gonna pretend that I'm a YouTuber. I'm gonna hold up a product to the camera like this and we're gonna see if the uh, autofocus grabs onto the product and then back to me and <laughs> my pretty face and then back to the product again like this and let's see how, how close we can get this to the lens if we can push that those 10 inches. The autofocus is working here and we'll see. 
Okay, now we found my face again. So yeah, that pretty much concludes this test. Even if there's been a lot of requests for an updated mirrorless version of this lens over the years, I don't think we're gonna see that anytime soon. Perhaps never, who knows? But I still feel like the MC11 adapter does a good enough job for you to keep this lens if you're planning on switching over to a camera like the Sony FX30 or maybe the new Alpha 6700. If you wanna pick up this adapter, I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can check out the pricing. I'm also gonna leave a link to the list where you can see all the supported lenses for the MC11 adapter. Now, with that said, I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna say hi or have questions, leave them down in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye.